John Sargent and welcome to Argumental, the show where the hottest names in comedy debate the biggest issues facing mankind. Issues like, why are amputees so damn good at sponsored mountain climbs? <laughs> Is it still a party if you're alone with an Iceland party platter? And why, after all these years, is there still no Nobel Prize for pornography? <laughs> Here to argue such burning issues and others like them are our teams. In the red corner with Marcus Brigstock this week, it's Katie Brand. <laughs> and joining Rufus Hound in the blue corner, please welcome Chris Addison. OK, let's kick off with round one, where we debate a big issue that for once doesn't cost £1.50 and smell of tramps. <laughs> Tonight, the subject under discussion is MPs. In Britain, there are over 650 MPs working tirelessly to ensure that the wheels of government turn smoothly. Fighting for the rights of the British public, they strive to maintain justice and equality ensuring the UK remains at the top of world politics. But lately, public confidence has been shaken due to an unfortunate expenses scandal. So, can our MPs ever hope to regain the public trust? A lot of honourable members there, but the issue I want the teams to argue over is this. MPs don't get paid enough. Supporting the statement on behalf of the Red Team, it's Marcus Brigstock. <laughs> it's your birthday. Yep, lucky me. <laughs> what I'm going to attempt tonight is a Darren Brown style mind trick. <laughs> <laughs> Using a series of diversions, you will wake up at the end of this argument and be convinced that MPs should be paid more. Why? Because if we paid them more, they would steal less. <laughs> it is a basic fact. Thank you. It's a basic fact that everybody knows. If you pay peanuts, you get Boris Johnson. <laughs> that is an unpalatable truth. There are lots of them. Unpalatable may be, but we know that they are fundamentally true. Paul McCartney is a bellend. We don't want him to be. <laughs> he was in the Beatles. He's part of the greatest songwriting partnership the world has ever known. But he's a bellend. <laughs> Unpalatable truths. Our MPs have to be paid more. We pay them more, and then they get no extras, no claiming for anything. If John Prescott breaks two toilet seats in a week, again, <laughs> if he breaks two in a week, he must shit in the woods like nature intended him to do. <laughs> Listen, there are certain things in life, if you buy them, you want a bargain. New top? Nice. Car? Bargain. Fantastic. Not MPs. You don't want a bargain. Good news, everyone. We've got a Prime Minister and he says he'll do it for a quid. <laughs> you know, it would be lovely to think that we could attract lots of politicians who are just in it for the principle, but people don't do stuff just for the principle. Nurses don't do it for the principle of the thing. They don't. They do it because they've seen ER and they think at some stage <laughs> there's a chance they'll be stooped by Clooney. <laughs> Teachers don't do it because they love the job. They do it because they love long holidays and they hate kids. <laughs> Doctors don't do it for any other reason than they know they're not Clooney, but eventually those nurses will get tired. <laughs> <laughs> you know? What this, what this breaks down to is this. You get what you pay for. Flashy trainers. Sure, they are impressive when you first saw them, but now they're Tony Blair. Shit and covered in Catholic lies. <laughs> and if you buy a brand new slipper, you open up the packet and realise nothing has yet been put inside it, that's an Anne Widdicombe. <laughs> you get what you pay for. Listen, being an MP is not a great job. Who here wants to be an MP? No because it's a shit job, isn't it? You wake up in the morning and everything you do is studied by the press. And then you have to meet your constituents, most of whom look like some sub-version of Ozzy Osbourne. <laughs> uh, we had to move house again because I've got 14 kids and, you know, the whole thing's broken. I wondered if you could... Oh, piss off. <laughs> <laughs> Let's face it, they're twats who should be paid properly to keep them where they are and attract the best people to that position. Vote red. 
Thank you. Thank you, Marcus. Okay, next up, opposing the statement, it's Chris Anderson. MPs are paid enough. And they're paid more on top of that. They are, if you will, paid <laughs> more than enough. It's a little phrase that I've made up for the occasion. But it's, the only people who think that MPs should be paid more are MPs. Why do they think this? Because MPs consider themselves to be special. It's not their fault. You would think you were special if the Queen turned up to your place of work once a year in fancy dress and did a state opening of the office. <laughs> but that is what happens to these people. Once a year, they troll into the House of Lords and there she is in a big hat with a book saying, this year my government intends to do a number of things where it got out the Daily Mail. <laughs> What's their job? Their job is to sort out the myriad tricky problems that face us. They're really tricky problems. I mean, these are really meaty, tricky problems. These are so tricky, they would probably wear down the battery on that little box that makes Stephen Hawking work. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we have been clattering through a recession for a year. They've done nothing about it. We're getting poorer and poorer and poorer. This morning, I checked the exchange rate and the pound is down against the turkey drummer. That's... <laughs> we'll be using scratch cards for currency. It's all very well in Wigan, but it's not going to work here, right? <laughs> well, maybe if MPs want more money, they could work for tips. That's the way that would ensure... Well, yeah, well that's a good system, isn't it? Because the, the, more, the way that tips work is, the harder you work, the better the job you do, the more money you get, and then MPs would start working harder, possibly being a bit flirtatious during constituency surgeries, maybe wearing lower-cut tops, you know, <laughs> <laughs> peephole blazers during Prime Minister's question <laughs> time. <laughs> I only see my MP when he needs something from me. I only see my MP when he wants my vote. When I want something, never see hide nor hair of him. That toilet seat's wanted fixing in my downstairs stairs bathroom these 18 months. Has he been round? No, he bloody hasn't. Right? <laughs> In America, there is a phrase, politics is Hollywood for ugly people. We don't have Hollywood, we have EastEnders, and there are already an awful lot of ugly people in that. So, <laughs> um, lastly, is it a good idea to distract them with more money? What do MPs spend money on? Prostitutes. Right? <laughs> now, that might not be true, but it's a fact. <laughs> <laughs> and every single one of us knows this, spends money on prostitutes. If we give them more of our money, they will be spending our money on prostitutes. We should be spending our money on prostitutes. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I urge you to keep your own money for prostitutes <laughs> and vote blue! Thank you, Chris. So, Katie and Rufus, is there anything you'd like to say in support of your teammates? I'd uh, like to say a few words in support of Marcus. Thank you. I thought that was heroic. <laughs> Thank you, sir. To stand there, look these people in the eye yes. and tell them MPs don't get paid enough. Even before you'd stood on that spot, everyone went, no. <laughs> <laughs> but Chris, you're absolutely right when you say they're not doing a good enough job. And they're not doing a good enough job because we haven't got the best people in there yet. We don't want the best and the brightest in there. We, don't, we want best and brightest people doing actual things like curing cancer and, and sorting out Justin Lee Collins and, you know, things <laughs> that need to happen. We don't want them footling their time away with Prime Ministers. In fact, Justin Lee Collins, it would work, wouldn't it? Because he's been a skydiver. Yeah. He's been, it'd be the, Justin Lee Collins is Prime Minister. <laughs> Just him at Prime Minister's question time. <laughs> Good times! <laughs> <laughs> now, we're, now we're turning the corner on this economy. Who's, who's your Chancellor? It's Alan Carr. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you all. So, do MPs get paid enough? It's time for the studio audience to decide who made the best case. Hold up your red card if you agree with Marcus, who thinks MPs don't get paid enough, and your blue cards if Chris convinced you that MPs get exactly what they deserve. So, vote red for Marcus and blue for Chris. Vote now. Well, I think the fact that there are any red paddles, that means the moral victory is yours, not Marcus. Bad, yeah. But the actual victory is ours. <laughs> <laughs> so that's a victory for the blue team. Well done, Chris and Rufus. <laughs> They've convinced our audience that MPs do get paid enough. I've recently considered becoming an MP. Not because I'm interested in issues so much, as I think in this time of recession, politics needs a bit of eye candy. <laughs> yeah. 
Our next round is called That's a Brilliant Idea. We're going to present our teams with a series of totally preposterous statements. It's our panellists' jobs to produce an argument in support of these statements. When I think they've made a convincing enough case, I'll press my buzzer and we'll move on. One more thing. They must begin each argument with the words, That's a Brilliant Idea. Rufus and Katie will play this one. Rufus, we'll start with you. Casey. And here's your first statement. Rufus. All Welsh children should become chimney sweeps. <laughs> is a brilliant idea. Of course all Welsh children should become chimney sweeps. From what I can work out, most Welsh children are parents by the time they're 12, so it's good to have an income. <laughs> Katie, there should be a new number between 7 and 8 called Branzini. Oh. <laughs> At last, that is a brilliant idea. Um, it, would, it would make the countdown for space shuttle launches much more interesting. <laughs> 10, 9, 8... Branzini. <laughs> Rufus, all car exhaust pipes should have a trumpet attached. It's a brilliant idea. That way, every time you got in your car, it would feel like you were with Louis Armstrong. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, think to myself. <laughs> what a wonderful world. <laughs> Katie, builders should wear looser trousers. That's a brilliant idea. I think they should not only wear looser trousers, they should wear no trousers at all. So that then, when you walk past a building site, you can go, all right, mate, nice bollocks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah! <laughs> yeah! Yeah, a lot of bollocks oh! fans in tonight! Girl power! Woo! <laughs> Spice Girls forever, right? <laughs> Rufus. Yeah. Everyone should be allowed one free murder. <laughs> that is a brilliant yeah, that idea. Is a brilliant idea. <laughs> I love it. And the moment that becomes law, Jeremy Kyle, run. <laughs> well done, both of you, but who do you in the studio audience think was the best at proposing the preposterous? If you think it was Katie, hold up your red card. And if you think it was Rufus, hold up your blue card. Vote now. It's a very even split. Yeah. I think, I think <laughs> Jeremy Kyle may have slightly swung it for you. <laughs> and I'd like to say I've already bagsied him, regardless of whether you get a free one or not. <laughs> well, it seems that Rufus was the most convincing, so well done to the blue team. Join us after the break when we'll be asking whether Gordon Ramsay displays an excellent command of the English language or if he swears too much and is a flipping bloody disgrace. <laughs> Welcome back to Argumental, the only television show that features 30 minutes of non-stop confrontational arguing, apart from every episode of EastEnders ever. <laughs> right, next up is Slideshow. One member of each team will again be debating a controversial issue. But this time I want them to illustrate their argument using a series of pictures which they've never seen before. Marcus and Chris, it's you two for this one. Marcus, I'd like you to start by arguing that alien visitors are bound to be our friends. <laughs> Here's your first picture. Yes. Ah. <laughs> yes. Alien visitors are bound to be our friends, as this first helpful picture shows. <laughs> but I think we know that they'd be our friends, because if you look at this next picture... <laughs> of an alien <laughs> who has been welcomed into the hearts of many a special needs listener <laughs> and happily volunteered his name as rhyming slang. <laughs> ah, that is a picture of the inside of my father's toilet. <laughs> Pull on that, it flushes. <laughs> oh, sorry. Just grab the, grab the horns and away she goes. Yes. <laughs> ah, yes. I think that the best approach when we do eventually encounter aliens will be to convince them that this is our leader. <laughs> when they come down and say, take me to your leader, we will simply take them immediately to Dame Edna Everidge, who will fling gladioli at them and say, darlings, welcome to Earth! <laughs> I mean, who could... Uh, wow. You see, 
You see that? I mean, sure, with a bit of fancy editing, that looks hostile, doesn't it? <laughs> but we can all... We can all twist the truth using the media, can't we? But no, with new guidelines in place, I think you'd realise that this misunderstood creature here that <laughs> bleeds acid <laughs> is really just in need of a simple human hug. <laughs> Folk red. Oh, Thanks, Marcus. Chris, I'd like you to argue the opposite, that alien visitors are bound to be our enemies. Here's your first picture. Aliens are hostile, ladies and gentlemen. Look at that finger. Look at that red-hot finger, just waiting to go where it's least wanted. Waiting <laughs> to torture every member of humanity. If he hadn't got a bit of a cough, when he came down first time round, because he's so nesh and a bit pathetic, <laughs> he'd have been among us. <laughs> that is Big Ken, and he is teaching the aliens how to mine the earth for this! <laughs> sausage and mash! <laughs> there is no sausage on ma and mash on any alien planet. It is the most valuable resource to all... <laughs> That's what they found in Area 51. They found... <laughs> when, they, when they cut that alien open, they found a belly shaped like sausage and mash, but empty. Uh. They, they have got... <laughs> Yuri Geller and his imaginary binoculars. <laughs> Even now, he is using to track the progress of his alien friends who are coming with unbendable spoons. <laughs> the one thing that Geller wants, he is bringing them to us with spoon after spoon after spoon that he can use finally to have a cup of tea that isn't destroyed by his fake nonsense. <laughs> Even if aliens are just coming to bring Yuri Geller a spoon, it'll have been a, you know what you like after a long trip. You get out, you think, right, I need a piss. I better go and find. <laughs> A dead baby hedgehog. <laughs> a dead baby hedgehog. I said they needed a piss and then they showed me a picture of a dead baby hedgehog and now it looks like the only way out of this is to do something about pissing on a dead baby hedgehog. <laughs> How am I supposed to recover from that? Well, luckily, alien piss revives dead baby <laughs> hedgehogs. So... But the hedgehogs will be annoyed and they will destroy us! <laughs> That's... Oh, right! The Doctor cannot save us, ladies and gentlemen. The aliens are coming. Real aliens. Not Daleks that can be defeated with stairs. Not Cybermen that can be defeated by, you know, pointing out that they're just actors in a costume. Real, actual aliens are coming. They are not our friends. You must, must, must vote blue. <laughs> OK, that is Chris, Rufus and Katie. Do you have anything you'd like to add? Very Daily Mailish attitude to intergalactic travel, if I may say so, Mr. Addison. Assuming that anyone who's not familiar to you will attack you and be your enemy. Goodness gracious me, pathetic, how dare you. <laughs> <laughs> there might yeah. be aliens here tonight. Exactly. Is They're just happily sitting watching, watching you do your comedy. <laughs> <laughs> do your comedy. That's, that's such a mum thing to say. <laughs> <laughs> Do your comedy tonight, love? Yes, Mum, I'm going to go and do my comedy. <laughs> <laughs> Let's suppose that they have been here already, right? And, the, you know, people who claim to have been abducted, they've taken, broadly speaking, simpletons, for whom the experience seems to have been exciting. I was just standing here in my backyard. They came down, they took me up, they pushed the thing to my backside. <laughs> Thank you. So are alien visitors bound to be our friends? It's time for our studio audience to decide who made the best case. It's a red card for Marcus, who says alien visitors are going to come in peace, and a blue one for Chris, who says they're going to blow us to pieces. Vote now. <laughs> that seems un un unlucky. A clear victory for the Reds. Well done, Yay! Marcus. <laughs> He's convinced the audience that alien visitors are bound to be our friends. We can see our fascination with weird and wonderful alien creatures in some of our favourite TV shows. Star Trek, Doctor Who, and of course, Loose Women. <laughs> if aliens do arrive here with super-evolved weapons of unimaginable power, I'm going to have no option but to introduce them to two very good friends of mine, Mr Sod and Mr Off. <laughs> 
It's on to our popular culture round now, where tonight's debate is all about hunky chunky Scottish chef Gordon Ramsay. He is the craggy headed cooking monster that's force feeding vegetarians and killing off our pub grub. A hit with the ladies, he loves nothing more than turning up the heat to gas mark sex. Gordo's been down on his luck recently. He's lost over £10 million. Oi, Crinkly, did you forget to check down the back of your face? Yes, Jeff. Stuff your posh nosh. Some of us just want some traditional British slop. Mmm, tasty delicious. OK, the statement I want you to argue is this. Gordon Ramsay is a master of the English language. First up, it's Rufus. Yeah, uh, Gordon Ramsay is a master of the English language. What's more impressive is that he's both Scottish and an ex-footballer. <laughs> By rights, his vocabulary should only extend to the words goal, divorce and special brew. <laughs> Ramsey is a master of the English language and indeed he's changed the way that we feel about language itself. He's made it incredibly modern. We don't really feel terribly offended anymore. It's worth remembering that we used to be quite offended by swearing to the point where fights would break out if a man heard another man swear in front of a woman. How would you ask if they fancied a fuck? He's clearly a master of the English language. He's one of the best-selling authors in the UK, although I'll give you this, most people are buying those books for the recipes rather than the narrative. But it's a trend <laughs> he hopes to turn in his next book, Harry Potter and the Caterer of Azkaban. <laughs> Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets. I haven't changed that one, he just... <laughs> if you look at him, he looks like a bloke who would have a Chamber of Secrets. <laughs> Very fritzel eyes. <laughs> Everything about this man is visceral. The moment he's doing anything, the shirt comes off, the whites go on, he's up on his toes, let's have it, let's feel it, let's be it. And that's reflected in his language. It's why he's a master of the English language. I'd like now uh, a volunteer. You, sir, uh, what is it you do for a living? You're a managing director of your own company. What does that company do, if I might ask? Builds sports, Builds sports pitches. Tennis courts, football pitches, that kind of thing, right? That was a conversation there. I don't know this man. It was pretty boring. Nobody, <laughs> nobody really felt anything about that, right? Now let's Ramsey this bad boy up. Ready? <laughs> All right, fuck flaps. <laughs> you big shit pissy monkey. <laughs> what do you do for a living? <laughs> fuck off, exactly! <laughs> We immediately feel better about ourselves, <laughs> you bum-flavoured cock goblin. <laughs> I feel fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> it's why right, Gordon Ramsay is the master of the English language. I flew out the goal. Well done. Next up, opposing Rufus and arguing that Gordon Ramsay is not a master of the English language. It's Katie. I thought that was a brilliant argument for why Rufus Hound is a master of the English language. Would that Gordon Ramsay could be that creative with his insults. Exactly. But he's not. All he says is fuck with the occasional bollocks thrown in for a bit of variety, which I'm not complaining about, <laughs> but still, it doesn't make you... <laughs> it doesn't make you a master of the English language. Gordon's excuse for all this is that it's just the language of the industry. No, Gordon, no. That is not a good enough excuse for yelling fuck into every passing person's face. Imagine if nurses <laughs> used the same excuse. <laughs> Just the language of the industry, says the nurse as they walk solemnly through the hospital. I'm so sorry, Mrs Wilkinson, but... Um... We did all we fucking could, yes? And at the end of the day, we just couldn't fucking save him. Yes, OK? So bereavement is happening. Move on. Done. <laughs> oh. Yeah. It's just the language of the industry. It's total nonsense. He's not a master of the English language. Maybe if we were arguing that he was a master of the Scottish language, which is mostly swearing and nonsense. <laughs> 
Mrs. World, Gordon Ramsay is the gold standard in English literature. So good. Let's take that back into history. So to be or to not fucking be, yeah? Existential angst. Done. Brilliant. Shall I compare thee to a fucking summer's day? Romance. Done. <laughs> if you can keep your fucking head while everyone around you is losing their bollocks, then fuck off out of my kitchen. Done. <laughs> Brilliant. Come on, guys. We all know that Gordon Ramsay might be a brilliant chef, but there is no way he is a master of the English language. So vote red, but more importantly, it's a vote against Gordon fucking Ramsay. Done. <laughs> Thanks, Katie. So, is Gordon Ramsay a master of the English language? Once again, the studio audience will decide who made the best case. Blue for Rufus and red for Katie. Vote now. It's a clear win for the Reds. Well done, Katie and Marcus. They've convinced the audience that Gordon Ramsay is not a master of the English language. It's hard to talk about Gordon Ramsay without saying so much as one sodding swear word. Oh, bum ass, I've knob it up already. <laughs> so, at the end of that round, both teams are neck and neck. <laughs> Time now for the final round and a last chance for our teams to show just how argumental they really are. I'm going to show them a series of images. All they have to do is suggest what argument the picture is proving. OK, here's your first one. <laughs> this is an argument that the final series of Big Brother is going to be crap. <laughs> Dear 43, and John and the donkey are playing <laughs> snooker. This is an argument about being very careful to not step on the brown. <laughs> I think this is an argument, it doesn't matter whether it's Blackpool Pleasure Beach or the inside of a working men's club, there is always a queue for the donkey. <laughs> Yeah. Thank you, Next one. <laughs> uh, this is an argument against letting paedophiles grow their own crops. <laughs> I think this is an argument that the old woman who lived in a shoe has finally been evicted. <laughs> This is an argument against the idea that if you're a farmer and you think if you have a quick wank in the seed hopper, nobody will know. <laughs> Next one. This is an argument against letting gimps have their own union. <laughs> this is an argument for never looking in John Sargent's dressing room. <laughs> OK, that's it. So, for the final time tonight, it's down to our studio audience to decide who made the best case. Red for Marcus and Katie, and blue for Rufus and Chris. Vote now. So, I can tell you that the red team have won the round, which means this week's winners are the red team. Well done, Marcus Bridgestock and Katie Brand. Commiserations to Rufus Hound and Chris Addison. That's all we've got time for. Good night. This Sunday night at 10, Ben Elton takes to the stage in front of his home crowd for the first time in years. See Dave's brand new exclusive one night stand on the 10th of the 10th at 10. Next, though, it's Mock the Week.